Hi everybody, I'm Storm Team 2 Chief Meteorologist Rob Fowler. Normally I'd be with you in your multi-purpose room, your classroom, but obviously things have changed this year, so we're doing this from our Storm Team 2 Weather Center. So welcome to our house for just a few minutes. And this is where we spend a lot of our time putting our forecast together. And after we do that by looking at computer models and drawing graphics, then we go down to the studio and that's where a lot of the magic happens. So let's head down to the studio. Welcome to our studio. We have different parts that you get to see on News 2 each and every night. This is our downstairs weather station and everything we can do upstairs where we were a few minutes ago, we can do down here. So we've got computers in the desk. We've got computers on the desk so we can put our weather graphics together, do our weather forecasting, looking at computer models each and every day. Then we go over to the green screen. So this is the infamous green screen. And you may say, what is this all about? Well, technically it's called chroma key. So every night when I do the weather, I stand right here in front of the green wall. Now, as you notice, there's nothing behind me in person, but there is on TV. We've told that camera that anything it sees the color green to replace it with something else. In this case, our weather graphics computer. So even though the green wall is still here, you don't see the green, you see the weather computer, in this case, the five day forecast. Now, how do I know what I'm pointing to when there's nothing but green behind me? Well, what you don't see at home, you don't see the TV set in front of me in front of the camera, you don't see the TV set over to my left, and you don't see the TV set over to my right. So when I turn and it looks like I'm looking at a weather map, guys, I'm really looking at that TV set. So we're giving away a little bit of our secrets and that's kind of uh, behind the curtain, if you will. So a question I get asked a lot is, can you wear the color green? If the camera's looking for the color green and putting something in place of green, what happens if I wear the color green? Well, I'll show you. Let's go right over here. This is my prop that I show the kids when they come to Channel 2, and you guys are getting a chance to see it. If I wore the color green, that's what would happen. Remember, the camera's looking for green and putting the map on the color green. So I could actually disappear just like this. I'm still here, but you don't see me. But that's why green is a no-no color. Cannot wear the color green, because if you do, guess what? You become the weather map. I wanna show you the rest of the studio. Besides the green screen, we have our news desk. That's where our news anchors will read and tell you guys about the news of the day. You see, we have a big background there. We also have live cameras, one of which is on our roof. So we don't have windows in the weather office, but this is how we can look outside, so to speak, and see what the weather is doing. In fact, let's go to the roof where we have weather measuring instruments to help us tell you guys the weather story. That's our weather station that basically tells us a lot of things, what the temperature is, basically how much rain we've seen here, and the rotating cup anemometer tells us the wind speed as well as the wind direction, the wind vane on the top. So very, very important for us to know exactly what the weather is doing here so we can better let you know what's gonna happen down the road here in our forecast. We're up on the roof at Channel 2 to kind of demonstrate what happens each and every day, not from our roof, but from the National Weather Service office in Charleston and about 100 other National Weather Service offices around the country each day, same time, roughly, roughly breakfast time and dinner time. And that is the launch of the weather balloon. So this is the weather balloon, probably bigger than a balloon you've seen ever before in your life, but this is a very special balloon. It's made of latex, and each and every day, the National Weather Service fills this with a gas, either helium or hydrogen, many times helium. That's the one, you know, the older kids. Suck on the helium balloon, and then they talk like the chipmunk. Well, it's a light gas that floats easily. So it's filled up. Once it's filled up, it's roughly about six feet in diameter. By the time it ascends into the atmosphere, it expands to about 20 feet in diameter then it eventually pops. When that happens, generally about 100,000 feet. The launch takes uh, just a few minutes, but usually lasts about two hours in terms of its trip, and many times can travel about 100 to 125 miles away from where it's launched. What do we do with this? Well, the balloon is very important, but also what's very important is this white box right here. This is what's called the radio sign, and this is attached to the weather balloon via string. Very light, made of styrofoam or a light material. Inside the radio sun, we have weather measuring instruments that will tell us about the weather up in the sky. And that's very, very important because we know we live on the ground, but we need to know what's happening up above us to understand what's gonna happen here on the surface. So this goes up 
with the balloon inside the weather measuring instruments along the way will tell us about the weather. We're talking about the temperature, the pressure and the humidity. That information then is sent back to the earth uh, on the ground via a radio transmitter. It's in a computer. That computer takes that information, that data and creates what we call a skew T, which is kind of a look at what the atmosphere is looking like at any given time. Now, a lot of people ask me what happens to the balloon? Well, as you mentioned, the balloon will expand and eventually it's going to pop. Does the radio sound pop? Actually, no, it falls back to Earth. What happens then? Well, the handy dandy parachute att is attached to it. It opens up and comes back down to Earth gently. Now, I can't tell you that in your lifetime, you might not find some of these. Generally, we only get back about 20% of all those launched. But if you do find one that falls in the backyard, maybe, there is a package here. It's got a mailing label. You put it back in, you mail it back to the National Weather Service, and they can use it again if it's not damaged too badly. So the weather balloon is very, very important each and every day to how we can forecast the weather. Well, certainly hope you've enjoyed our little tour of Channel 2 and also a look inside the forecast, if you will. I would love to be there in person with you, but I can't. So basically, if you have any questions, your teacher knows exactly what to do. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And if you don't want to ask a question now, you can always reach me here at Channel 2. But I wish I could be there, and someday I will. I'll be seeing you guys soon. But until then, you guys stay safe, and uh, sunny days are ahead.